Good morning. Today is a very special day. Two very special people, Robert and Karen, they send us this. And I can't wait to unpack it. We just didn't find the time just yet. It's been here for like two days <laughs> looking at us. But today is the day we're going to open it up. Ooh. Yes, finally getting my pet snake from New Jersey. <laughs> There's no pet snake in there. <laughs> we want to say thank you to Karen and Robert from New Jersey, two of our lovely patrons for sending us this. And I believe there's a camera in there. Yes, also we want to say thank you to the rest of our patrons who help us to achieve our milestone for our camera gear and the pet snake. It's not going to be a pet snake. <laughs> Let's it. open it. Let's open hopes. it. Come on. Oh. Slice the camera first thing. Oh the yes, the lens. I don't see a snake. So that's that's good. Let me see. Oh wow. Oh yes, man. Oh, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> guys, you have no idea, man. Thank you so much. Oh, this is way too much, way Robert. Too much, way too guys. much, and Karen, this is way too much. Yeah, next time just send a GoPro half. No batteries, no, it's way too much. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, look at this. This is a six inch telecin dome for this on the water shot, like half on the water, half. Yeah, like, um, like those. Da -da -da -da. The telecin dome. Oh, more on the water casing, <laughs> awesome, because they do break, and more filters. Thank you so Karen much. Karen and Robert, guys, thank you so much, you have no idea. This is, uh, we're so humble. This is really nice of you guys, yeah, to send us this and... I feel like I have to go in the water right away, that's yeah. it, I'm not coming out anymore. <laughs> Into the wild again. check out the reef that is not far away. We came back to Anste, I think it's Grand Anse, and then Anste Alleys on the other side. Two bays that are very popular. Um, yeah, we didn't want to stay longer in Fort de France because the anchorage is actually very, very rolly and we were very close to the ferry. So we thought it was better to go. But this is only a few hours up the coast. And yeah, we are planning to clean our hole because there's a lot of growth on it. But first, we're gonna check out the reef. It's uh, there's one here on one side of the of the bay, and there is one further on as well. And we're just gonna take the dinghy and see if we can see something interesting. The, the actually the whole bay is full of turtles. I had a coffee here this morning, and you can see the heads coming up everywhere like lots of them so if we're lucky we're gonna see some turtles as well and some of them are really big <laughs> just a short dinghy ride actually um we don't have to go that far it's just at the exit of the bay and they do dive in there so apparently there's a good spot there to do um, to do diving and snorkeling we can't go diving because if we waste our air uh, diving then we can't clean the hole and <laughs> yeah. we're gonna try snorkeling first we're gonna try to clean the hole first just with a snorkel mask and snorkel but i think that's gonna be quite difficult because the last time sarah tried she was just coming up like dead she was like <gasps> <laughs> no the last time you tried you got a crap in your ears yeah, <laughs> and we're bringing this this is our new rig yeah and nika made this up finally have a underwater camera a proper one that i can't drown thank you robert thank you robert <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
where we're snorkeling but we're gonna go quite close to the rocks so it's better to just leave it here somewhere and yeah there's a nice mooring here for us that we could probably use guys we are currently in Martinique Fort de France the capital I were really looking forward to explore the island but we've got a bit of an issue one of our seacocks failed they were supposed to last for 15 years and we've just exchanged them when we came out of the yard in Malta um, yeah so we're faced with a bit of a problem at the moment we're actually about to leave to Cariaco but Nick is down in the engine and he's gonna explain you a little bit more in detail because he knows all the technicalities. Yeah we have a, a bit of a problem the other day we tried to close all the seacocks because we're gonna leave the boat for uh, for like for the entire day and we normally do that and also we from time to time we open and close it just to maintain it and the one that cools the engine is a, is a one inch uh, ball valve the handle snap but when I went to close it and he, he snapped pretty much all, almost in a close position and it was the stem from within inside the bolt valve so it's, it's not possible to actually fix it so we tried to replace it in the water with it uh, Steve from uh, Sweet Cordelia helped me and, uh, but what happened is we did replace it but we moved a little bit the skin fitting I was afraid of that because I read on the forums and everything and they said that yeah there is a chance that you move the skin fitting and you get a leak well we did got a leak so this is the one we changed and we moved the skin fitting a little bit if you, there's a couple of marks here if you can see we made those marks when when we took it out if you see it move so so that's why we got the leak yeah well now I'm gonna show you the real issue that we have <laughs> at the moment so so this is the, the I think it's called the stern gland and that one is the one that cools the shaft while we were changing the seacock, I just touched it and it just broke. And it was corroded, it was brass. I think it's supposed to be bronze or stainless. This one, if you see that holes in there, that's the one for the that comes from the seacock. And it connects to a, a little nipple that goes in there. Well that nipple just snapped and I close this now. I put a uh, something in there and I put a jubilee clip and it is closed now. But if you were to open this, just water just goes out. So that means we can also no motor because the shaft will get hot, and also it can probably damage this area. That's what I've read on the on the internet. It could damage this area because there's no lubrication. This is part of that little stern nipple. It was made of brass. It's completely corroded. It went really dark and literally just like bread. It just came out. 
while we were trying to find out if we can lift out here in Martinique or if we can't and how much it's gonna be and all of these kinds of things we kept an eye on the leak which wasn't major but it was a steady trickle and the bilge pump kept going on from time to time it, it's just way too expensive to lift out here in in St. Anne actually they have a, a travel lift it's three to four times more expensive so we decided okay we're gonna go to Granada instead where it's a third so what we're gonna do we're gonna sell to Carriacou and then we're gonna just right in front of the yard we're gonna try to fix first the stern gland the little nipple and we're gonna close the shaft from within the area where the propeller is, the, the cutlass bearing, we're gonna try to seal that with some sort of putty or something like that to, to stop the water coming into the shaft and then we're gonna try to fix it. And we're gonna try to tie up the, the other one that moved a little bit. So it's only like a day sail to Grenada and I think it's the best that we can do. Just in front of the travel lift, we're just going to try to fix it and if something goes wrong they can lift us up a little bit there. Bit. No, sorry. <laughs> so. <laughs> so we're gonna be close to the yard to try and fix the gland nipple you said it's called? It's called the stern gland nipple. <laughs> the stern I gland nipple. I really don't want to keep that in my head but that's what it is. So yeah we want to be at least close to the yard or if anything happens they can pull us out right away. So we're gonna get on the way now. Vamos. So at the moment we're just going to use the engine just to lift anchor but we don't really want to use it too much because we don't really know how much you can use it actually <laughs> without cooling. cooling it so yeah but it's okay it's we don't need it much at the moment so to go there there's a lot of wind <laughs> actually we have a lot of wind yeah, yeah it's like 30 knots out there which is good we're gonna be in Kariaku in no time For the France now. It's pretty comfortable because we're going like almost dead downwind but we have to turn in a minute and it's gonna be pretty wild because when we left the anchorage was about 30 knots but it's gonna be like every time we're in the shadow of one of the islands there's quite a few islands all the way down to Daria it's gonna be calm and then when we hit in between the islands it's gonna be rough so but we get a break. We have about 24 hours. Bit of a pity that we didn't get to explore Martinique just yet. But hopefully it's only gonna take us a couple of days, maximum a week in Cariacu. Then we're just gonna explore Cariacu and Granada. And maybe we're gonna come back to Martinique and maybe go up a little bit. Ago. now it's just almost dead calm but look at this scenery 
Amazing, isn't it? The pitons, no? The pitons. Pitons de San Lucia. I believe it's French. Pitons? Yes. Otherwise, pitones in Spanish. Uh, Python. <laughs> You can see the wind just comes in and then just for like 10 seconds and then it goes again. You get like 25 knots and then it goes down to 6 knots. I think it's because the the, the pitons. The pitons, <laughs> they make their own weather. A few years ago I was watching a documentary about St. Lucia and I thought wow this just looks so amazing. What a coastline. And now, here. Man, we're not going to stop, unfortunately, for this time, but I think we should come back and hike because this is, this is just amazing. It looks so scary, though. I'm not sure which one they call the, the Petit um, Piton and which one is the Grand Piton, but um, yeah, they look equally scary, to be honest. Just Amazing, what a coastline. I wonder how this was formed, to be honest. And uh, you can see it all the way from Martinique. I wasn't aware the islands are actually so close together. I mean, you can see them on the map and on the chart, but it's still such a different thing if you're sailing around here and traveling around here that you realize the scale of everything. So yeah, Martinique is very close and this is very large. Join us next time on SP Cuba as we sail to Cariacu to attempt one of the most difficult repairs we have ever done, fixing two leaks in our sailboat without taking it out of the water. <laughs>